Greetings, good morning, peace and love to everybody. Word up. My name is Kimberly Wright. This is the class all about poetry, spoken word, and short stories. I hope you all are feeling well out there today. And we're going to get to uh, our lessons or prompts from last week. However, I want to start off by saying today is August 25th, 2021, Wednesday. It's the day we have our poetry class. I'm so excited. Thanks again for joining. Uh, I wanted to say that the holidays and events for today are National Banana Split Day. Woo! Um, one thing that I always loved about banana splits, besides even eating them, is where the, the, the smell of it, just the smell of the fresh bananas with the different flavors that like really gets you going as far as your taste buds wanting to uh, eat a banana split. So if you all wanna uh, partake in that today, feel free to go out and purchase your own or even make your own. All right, also today is National Secondhand Wardrobe Day. How many times have you bought an item of clothing only to wear it once? Oh, let me give, give me one second. So while I am doing this uh, holiday and event for today, I would like for you to get paper and pen, please. If you haven't already had paper and pen, thank you. How many times have you bought an item of clothing only to wear it once or twice and throw it away after years of collecting dust in the back of the closet? Sadly, the answer is too many times. Thankfully, there's a movement taking place in America that could help save us from our wasteful sales. National Secondhand Wardrobe Day on August the 25th, buying clothes secondhand and donating your used clothes creates a positive cycle that is crucial for cutting back our waste. Unfortunately, there's a stigma surrounding secondhand clothing stores or thrift shops, but it's time to bring this to light and talk about why it's so flawed. Secondhand shopping saves you money, has a positive impact on the environment, and if done correctly, can certainly lead to a closet of some cool new duds. So on August 25th, head to your favorite thrift store and get some old threads, some new old threads. All right. Don't forget that even though I am uh, giving you uh, daily holidays and events, um, you are more than welcome to write those down too. Uh, if it's something that interests you to write about, um, for your poetry prompts or any of your writing prompts. So I said today was National Banana Split Day and National Secondhand Wardrobe Day. All right. So if once I get to start to put the lesson on the board and everything, for whatever reason, if you are not able to see, then I want to um, spotlight my video again. However, um, I want to start with the lesson today in case we don't get a chance to finish all the way. Then, thank you, sorry. Then, uh, you all can finish that particular project next week. All right. So I have my paper out as well to complete the project with everyone. And we're gonna have a timed writing exercise. I'm gonna just write that down. We're going to have a time. If you want to write it down as well, you can. Writing exercise and what is this going to do to improve your writing.
All right. Today we have a time writing exercise to improve all of our writing. So please get pen and paper. Writing prompts and exercises are a fantastic way to improve your writing, increase your creativity, and free you from writer's block hell. If you want, if you wait for inspiration, you're not a writer, you're a waiter. I find the practice of timed writing exercises a freeing way to learn about your own voice and style. The technique opens doors that you never knew existed. Story ideas suddenly exist on the page and you don't know what led to their discovery. The practice can feel like a trance, separating you from the editor many of us are used to. Instead, you read your work a month later and are shocked at the riches on the page. The following exercise we're about to uh, complete together include your daily writing practice. A daily writing practice will lube your mind, so to speak, and put an end to writer's block, promising words when you put pen to page. These are not meant to be fine essays or publishable works of fiction. However, they create those essays and works of fiction that you have until now only thought about. The real writing they say is in the rewriting. You must write before you get anything else done. All right. So right now we have six participants, including myself. I'm going to give you the, let me see which one they do today quickly. All right. So I'm going to find an online dictionary and it's going to be in the language you do not speak. Some of you may speak one of these languages fluently, but we're going to work with Today, we're going to work with Spanish. So I may be doing some, uh, some of these exercises a little bit later in another language. I'm going to give you all a word. And you want to copy the word down. Do not look, do not try to uh, research or look at the definition or have it translated. You write about what you think it means. Use, uh, yeah, so first let me, I have one, two, three, four, Five, six, Gloria, L, Vicky, M, Betty, C, Jean, B, Sharon. H, Kimberly, W. All right. So the reason why I wrote that down is in case we don't get finished with that writing today, uh, you will be able to expound on that next week. All right. Uh, hmm. So, Miss, uh, get these words down. Sorry. Should have already had that down. Sorry, young people, be right with
Sorry, I'll be right with you all. All right. Uh, sorry about that. All right, for Ms. Gloria Langley, I have uh, the word Madera, M-A-D-E-R-A. -E Don't look it up right now, but just write down what you think that means right now. And then I want you to look that up later. Uh, Miss Vicky, you have Pagina, P A G I N A. What was that again? Pagina, P A G I N A. Miss Betty, you have Verano, V E R A N O. If you all need to ask me what that is again, feel free. Miss Jean, you have Viejo, V I E J O. And then I have Miss Sharon Hardnett. I have Amentando, Amentando, A U M E N T A N D O. So right now, I want you all to write down what you think those words mean, right beside your word. Then sometime after class, you can uh, use, using that definition, whatever you thought that it meant, write a story that involves the grocery grocery shopping. Can you pronounce my word one more time, Kimbo? Who is that, Miss Sharon? Yeah. Aumentando. A U M E N T A N D O. Aumentando. A U M E N T A N D O. Miss Betty, did you get your word? It was Verano, V-E-R-A-N-O. Write down that, what you think that means. What was right. mine, uh, Kim, P-A-G-I-N-A? -A? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so, write 
Write this down, write a story that involves grocery shopping. With that word and with the definition that you thought it was, and then later on you want to write uh, down what the word actually means. So you can look that up online. All you have to do is uh, write, put, type the word in the search bar or uh, put translate this particular word, whatever it is, and they'll give you the meaning. All right, quickly for the second. Um, Excuse me. Bless you. Quickly for the second um, writing challenge, I want everybody to quickly grab a book. I have my book right here. Take your time. Grab any book. All right, does everybody, let me make sure everybody back. I'm waiting on Miss Betty. And I don't know if Miss Sharon Hartnett is somewhere she can uh, participate, but however, okay. I have a book. All right, great job. Hopefully we all have a large content of pages in there, but if you do not, then you can raise your hand. I want everybody to go to page 56. Remember to keep that book for next class because you're gonna need to know what book you had this class. Everybody see if you have a page 56. So that's a yes? Yes. 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 You don't have one, Miss Glory Langley? I need to get another book. Okay, go ahead. Take your time. And Everybody I can just pick it up. Ma'am. What'd you say, Miss Betty? Yeah. No, I have 56. I just picked up a book. I didn't know we needed to no, have good. something to work out of, but that's okay. No, 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 no. You just need the book. Go to page 56. Everybody turn to page 56. Okay. And remember which book you had if you need to write that down. So next week, you're going to be like, I can't even remember what book I had. Write the book that, down that you have. If you need to write this book down, let me go ahead and write mine down before I somehow manage to not remember. Also, I wanted to say that I do have your, uh, your submissions that you gave me for the pearls of wisdom. I have your submissions that you all gave me for grandparents day for the pearls of wisdom. All right, so I'm writing down the book that I have. All right, turn to page 56, everybody. Copy the first line, which is the first sentence that's uh, on page 56. Write the first sentence down on page 56. If it's, a, um, if it's a part of a sentence, go ahead and do that too. That's fine. Okay. And you don't even have to write it down if you don't want to just, you know, make sure to write the instructions down that I have, that I'm saying the first sentence. So I'm just going to go ahead and write mine. So mine is a continuation from the previous page. Is that okay? Say that again. My uh, sentence is a continuation from the previous page. Okay, well then go to the next sentence, which will be the first complete sentence on that page.
All right. Everybody finish? Now you want to go to the first page of the book that you have, the first page that has some writing on it. Not like your table of contents or your introduction, the actual first page of the whatever the writing is. You don't want the um the autobiographical uh, notes or something like that? No, uh -huh. like whatever the first chapter. Oh, first chapter, okay. Something like that is. And, and make sure, yeah, you write down that page or whatever. All right. So what you want to do is go to the first page and enter the first sentence. Meaning, like, write down the first sentence. So right beside the beside the sentence that you the first sentence that you wrote beside it, which was uh, from page fifty six, write down just like a little footnote beside that last sentence. Say that again, Kim. I'm sorry. The first sentence that you wrote down, which came from page 56. Yeah. Beside that, kind of somewhere like in parentheses, write down last sentence. I don't understand. Just write down last sentence? Like a footnote. You want to write down. Okay. I don't have enough. My, you, see my, you see my first sentence right here that I wrote? By, this is page 56. I wrote down last sentence. Okay. And then when I when I asked you all to go to page one, or which whichever the beginning of the book is, I want you to write in in the parentheses beside that first sentence. All right, so now you don't have to rewrite the sentence just as it is. However, if you want to use those two sentences just as they are, you can, or you can rewrite them the way that it's going to uh, fit into your story. It can be a short story, which, my, which I mean like half a page or a page, or it can be uh, some type of just a writing or like a short poem. However, you want to write the story, but have that first sent the the, the 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 one from page one that's going to be your first sentence, and the one from page fifty six is going to be your last sentence. What it's going to be about? Everybody got it. I have a question. I don't get it. Okay, so we're really making up from the first sentence to the end. So the, the middle part, making a story, we're just making it from the beginning sentence to the end sentence. Not that, not that we have to read what all this is about, right? You now have a beginning and an end to your okay. story. Okay. So you have to fill out something in the middle of that. It can be short. It can be... However you want to describe it, it's up to you. Okay, I understand what you're saying. No problem. Miss Vicky? 
Well, my sentence is so long. Uh, 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 that's why I say family. you might. That's why I say you might have to revise it yourself. Okay. You don't want to change the the subject of whatever they're actually talking about, but you might have to revise it within your own writing yourself. Okay. All right. Anybody have anything they want to share out there? Any pieces? Yes, Miss Jean. Yes, Miss Jean. I didn't give you my words of wisdom, did I? I don't know. Let's see. So when I asked everybody if they wanted to do pearls of wisdom, I had Betty Coleman, Sally Dawson, Gloria Langley, and Vicki Myers. Oh. Did you want to? Yes. All right. So you can write that in the chat or you can. Okay. Yes, because what we're going to do is make a small booklet called The Pearls of Wisdom for okay. Grandparents Day, and you all will be issued a, a booklet of that, but your saying will be in there. Hopefully, the saying would have come from your grandparent or somebody wise like that. So you can give me that. You can email that to me or send it to me in the okay. chat. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, Kimberly, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, when, when are you expecting us to do this writing prompt that you gave us about anytime the book? You, anytime you ready, finish with it. Don't have to be next week. Take your time. Okay. Thank you. So this is a timed writing exercise to improve your writing. You really want to take probably about, uh, 10 minutes. That's all you really want to take. So. You can't write no two whole pages in 10 minutes. 10 minutes. So write down 10 minutes on that page so y'all know how long it's supposed to be taking to write that. It's supposed to be a 10 minute writing. And that's for- 10 minutes to write down the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> that's for both of them. You're supposed to just use 10 minutes worth of time just to see what you actually get. And that's how sometimes you uh, create little things or do things to keep you from having writer's block. I gave you two. So anybody have a, uh, so last week I gave you all some prompts. And if you're not ready with those particular pieces, it's no problem. Uh, we had, I gave you all some prompts last week. Anybody have anything that they want to, uh, all right, let me just go I ahead. Have and something from week before last. I have something from week before last. I wasn't here last week. I had an appointment. Uh -huh. I, I think I, I sent you a, 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 a email out or a text. But anyway, I wrote something based on the previous week's prompts you had given us. Um, you told me I had a prompt for holding my breath, write a yeah. short story or poem. Okay. But I wrote, I wrote something about holding my breath. Okay. It's a little short story, so bear with me. It's not very long. Between 20 and 50, I remember so well. It's a short story poem. <laughs> it rhymes. <laughs> Between 20 and 50, I remember so well. 30 years of holding my breath un until I could leave. The job, the meetings, the need to excel. Forever so long watching the way. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm so sorry. Set. That's your center noise. You gotta mute yourself. That's not me, baby love. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. Hold on one second. I'm so sorry. Y'all please be mindful of your background noise. To mute yourself, I've muted it right. All right, go ahead, Miss Vicky. I'm sorry. You can start over if you like. Okay, holding my breath. Between 20 and 50, I remember so well. 30 years of holding my breath until I could leave. The job, the meetings, the need to excel. 
for ever so long watching and waiting to breathe from life in the red race on edge standing tall wondering each day with my back against the wall when would i get off the merry-go-round stop stumbling and whirling before hitting the ground but one day i stood suddenly still looked up and around because all I could feel was lungs inflating full with cool, fresh air. Then with laughing lips pursed with a flare, I left job, work, and worry behind, breathing in life's new adventures now on my mind. Great. I can relate to that, Vicky. What was the title of it, Miss Vicky? Holding my breath. <laughs> And did you say something about your lips perched? Uh, pursed. Pursed? With laughing lips pursed. You know how you purse your lips? <laughs> With okay. a flare. Okay, great job. I really, really like that. Yes. I'll get for you because you might decide to leave your job one day. We already left ours. <laughs> essentially, you were holding your, so essentially, you was holding your breath for that time when you could stop working and live your life. Yes. Oh, yes. I was yes. looking forward. Between 20 and 50, you're working and working. Yes. And working. Wow. Yes. At 53, I made it. <laughs> I retired. Great job. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. That was so nice. So don't forget to, you don't have to revise that. It was really perfect. Don't forget to uh, copy that down in your journal or if you see anything you need to change, feel free. Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, to remind you all, anytime later I gave Ms. Terrell Sparkman a prompt called An Event That Changed You. Ms. Vicki Myers just did her prompt, Holding Your Breath. Uh, I gave Ms. Gloria Langley time travel and how would you travel to your particular time? Uh, I think she did that, a birthday poem. No, I'm I'm ready with my tra time travel. If oh okay, if yeah, I remember you did a birthday poem about. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I did. You're for your incarcerated friend, Miss Betty Coleman. I gave you a time you felt homesick. Karen Hartnett. I gave you imagine life in an aquarium, and Miss Jean. Okay. Hey, Miss Jean, I gave you. What? I gave you what a computer might daydream about. Yes. All right, All right Miss Gloria Langley. Um, yes, my prompt was about time travel, where I would travel and why. And the, the title of my piece is Traveling Melodies. If I could travel back in time, I would go back to the 1970s dash 80s. And this is a story, by the way. Now, let me tell you why. The dash between those years represents the period of my life when I was pretty much carefree. You see, all of the chips were falling in my favor. I had graduated from community college. My first real love affair was with this guy who had a good job working for Delta Airlines and who had traded his Volkswagen Beetle for a beautiful snow white Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. He even trusted me to drive it and keep it occasionally. I felt like I was on top of the world driving my boyfriend's Stingray. That was just one reason, but of course there were others. For instance, my part-time getting through college job at Sears Roebuck and Company had turned into full-time. So I was making real money now. It was also in the late 70s when I made the announcement to my parents that I had found the perfect apartment and I was going to be moving out on my own. I laughed because they must have really been praying for that announcement because they insisted on helping me furnish it. Since I am a lover of old school music, for me, traveling back in time forces me to remember the times when the words to music really meant something. It appears that the songs that were being released during this time period hold a special place in my heart because they summed up what I may have been going through at that time. 
As I remember of my first love affair with my boyfriend who owned the Stingray, Isaac Hayes had released the hit, I Stand Accused of Loving You Too Much in 1970. During, during that time, I felt that I was living proof of that. So much so that my sister said that I played that song over and over so much that the little circles had scratched off the record and the needle of the stereo player would just glide all the way across to the hole in the middle. She teases me about that to this day. The OJs was one of my favorite R&B groups. So I was definitely on the love train. Life was good. I had a good job, was able to purchase what I call my first sports car, brand spanking new off the lot for $6,000. It was a beige color 1977 Firebird with a brown stripe on the side. Yeah, life was so good. It was around this time that the Mac McFadden and Whitehead released Ain't No Stopping Us Now. And boy, I felt like I was on the move. Well, my life is now an open book with you guys because I have already shared with you in a previous piece about the challenges I faced during my marriage, although a beautiful baby girl was conceived. That brings to mind Frankie Beverly's hit song, Joy and Pain, or like Sunshine and Rain, which was released in 1980. That's exactly how, how I was feeling at that time. If I had the opportunity to travel back in time, I would only stay for a short while, perhaps just to go to some concerts to hear many of the artists that I have mentioned and see them perform these iconic songs. I actually do that almost daily after my morning meditation with God. I go to my playlist that I name throwback music because these melodies get me through my morning walks and exercise routines. Or if I'm having a down day or just working around the house, I put them on and dance like nobody's watching. It's just something about them that make me feel good and helps me to keep going. Just because I am moving forward doesn't mean that these melodies didn't leave lasting memories within my heart. I call them my happy songs because they have traveled with me. Oh, by the way, I love many of the melodies from this era. Songs like Mary J. Blige, My Life's Just Fine, that was released in 2007. Guess what? That's exactly how I'm feeling now. That's it. Hey. So you were really inspired to you the prompt helped you and then you actually had some memories and came up with that writing? Yes. Good job. I wish I could uh, read that later somehow more in depth, you know, just to kind of like sometimes you read stuff, you can take it in better. So um, what's the title of that piece? Something Traveling about Melodies. Oh, Traveling Melodies. So. Okay, I want to read that later, if you don't mind. Sure. Thank you so much. Ms. Jean? I want to compliment her on the details. Uh -huh. um, she, You took time to think about what each song meant, and you added the details. That was very well done. You, you took you. me back to the times I thought about songs and what songs do to me. Well done. I just want to say, you know. Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Do this. No, I can't do it. Oh, but Veronica said it was good too. My daughter's in the other room. <laughs> thank you, she Veronica. Said, she said, she said, thanks, Veronica. She said, good. She heard it too. <laughs> you set the bar really high. I don't want to read mine. <laughs> but you're so silly. <laughs> and the truth hurts. <laughs> All right, so I wanted you all to know that there is a site called uh, What in the World? I just wrote that down. There is a site called, you can all check it out, fan 
F A N Story S T O R Y dot com. This particular website has a lot of uh, a lot of information for writers and also a lot of different contexts. Fanstory.com, a lot of contests that you can enter, like they do have some contests that are in like three days for haiku poll, or they have contests that's coming up for Halloween, you know, to write like a tank up poem with the seven, five, diff five lines, you know. So if you want to just, and you know, they have prizes that you can win. They ha also have different type of writing challenges and prompts that you can write about. So feel free to uh, check that website out if you like. All right, I wanted to share a couple of pieces with you young people. All right, if I could just get all my paperwork together. All right, there it is. I already had it together. So, this is a piece called Why He Loves Coffee. Why He Loves Coffee by Tex Norman. The book by the bed said, not much was read. Hey, pillow, is he asleep? Yeah, replied pillow, but not deeply. His head bobs like a boat moored on a windy night. He's got restless leg syndrome, or so I suspect, said the bed clothes. Well, if you saw through his eyes, the glasses explain, you'd see what he sees. You'd know what he knows. You'd get why he is troubled in sleep. And why, asked the digital clock, will the glasses share their insight? You know time is always running out. He gets that, said his journal. He knows his time alive is short and that has magnified his short shortcomings, intensified his regrets and shame waits for him to sleep. So while he rests, shame nibbles and gnaws on his guts. His coffee cup asks, am I the only one here willing to comfort him? Hmm. That's why he loves coffee. Hmm. That was that. <laughs> That was that particular piece. All right. Okay. Um, um, what, what was that by Kim? Norm. By Tex Norman. T E X Norman. N O R M A N. And the Tex. title was Why I Love Coffee? Yes. Why he loves coffee, right? Why? It's called. Sorry. Tex Norman. Why he loves coffee. All right, this next piece is, is uh, gonna be by Tex Norman as well. The prompt says, write a poem about your pillow. I gave you all this, this prompt before in case you all wanted to write about it. It can be as serious or funny as you like. If you pick funny, see if you can write some rhyming cat in the hat light work, but serious can be perhaps easier. I heard on TV that your pillow can double in weight due to dust, mite, and excrement. As a, as a kid, I remember how I would get hot and throughout the night I was flipping my pillow to the cool side. Think of all the dreams hatched on your pillow or lovers who shared your pillow or children who rested on your pillow or times when your significant other hit you in the face. Think of your pillow as a witness to some aspect of your life. Perhaps you have cried on your pillow. Maybe you like to read while propped up on your pillow. Maybe a pillow played some role in your sex life. Count the pillows on your bed. Count the pillows in your house. Imagine a functional pillow debating a decorative pillow. Has a pillow ever played an important role in your past? Here is the pillow effort by Tex Norman. 
As a child, I had pillows stuffed with feathers. I was before foam rubber was common. It was during the time when feathers were common and pillars, pillows were filled with bird magic. Sometimes in the night, I would feel something stick in me. I used my fingers like tweezers and pinched the point and pulled. Out came a feather. It was my explanation for how my dreams travel, not on wings, but on feathers. My dreams drifted. My dreams responded to the slightest hint of a movement. My head filled with the impossible and it seemed all so totally, absolutely possible. That was it. All right, the next poem I want to share with you all is called Time, Time. I have two more pieces by Lawrence Allen Brown. Time, it's the present leaving the past, heading into the future. You can't save it, you can waste it, but you can't kill it. If you don't use it, you will lose it. You can't rush it, but it can rush you. You can't do without it. You can have it, but not forever. When it's up, it's up. But right now, it's there for you. It's yours, moment by moment. So don't try to measure it. Just use it and treasure it. Y'all like that? Time. All right. Every, every moment is precious. Yes, Miss yeah. Jean. I thought it was kind of trite. <laughs> okay. it's, it's sort of lecturing because I always wanted time to do absolutely nothing. Okay, that's you what know, you do with I, I time. Just, I, I was so busy when I was uh, younger and I just always said, I just want to do absolutely nothing. And it's uh, you end up, it's very hard to do absolutely nothing. Yeah, it's and very I, hard to do absolutely nothing. It's, it's, it's nothing wrong with uh, keeping a good balance. Yes, Miss Jean. And I guess when you read the title time, I was expecting something really um, not sophisticated, but something more philosophical about okay. time. Okay, so why don't you write a piece about time in a philosophical sense so I can get uh, what thanks. you have to put out there. Thanks. <laughs> I, I needed that. Write something about time because I I, I I think about it a lot. You know, we think about it like the, the poem stated, Cam. Sometimes you lose, you don't use it. You, you, lose, you can't you lose it. Really, because yeah. it's always around you. So I could really get deep about time, but I'm sure, a sci-fi time, person. So you time, know, time. time. <laughs> and you know, time is constant and it's never ending. Yes. It's omnipresent. And it's everlasting. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> Trying to get deep. Want me to get deep? <laughs> <laughs> you did a good job because it's everlasting. It's everlasting. <laughs> All right. So right now I'm going to do the last piece that I have. And if you all have anything else that you want to share, Feel free. If not, then uh, you can just go ahead and say some point, take 10 minutes out of your life and your time to do the time. two, the two, the two uh, writing exercises that I gave you. One was on uh, the Spanish words and the other one was on uh, writing a story that had to do with that first and last sentence. All you right, said don't this, look them up, do you? Do, you don't want to say don't look them up. up. You you want to look them up. Look kind of simple, like American words, really. <laughs> you want to look those up after you have written down what you think they mean. Okay. All right. This piece is called or titled "Lost in the 21st Century." <laughs> All right. Lost in the 21st Century. It seems like the whole world is passing me by. I can't keep up no matter how hard I try. Everything is moving so fast for me. I think I'm lost in the 21st century. For years I've been hearing about the internet, but I haven't figured out how to get online yet. 
I got an iPad, an iPod, and an iPhone, and I still don't know what's going on. Toolbars, pin numbers, secret passwords, all this stuff is for the birds. And as much as I hate to confess, I can't even remember my own email address. It's embarrassing to admit, but I can't tell a lie. I received a text message, but don't know how to reply. Every time I need help, I feel like a fool because the ones helping me are in elementary school. I was trying to read something I had just completed. I hit the wrong key and everything got deleted. I got the latest hardware and the latest software and I still can't manage to get anywhere. My smartphone has hundreds of apps, but using them is harder than understanding rap. You know, it's really a shame when you keep forgetting your own username. HD, 4G, MP3, it's all driving me crazy. I'm on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Yahoo, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. A friend of mine told me to get Wi-Fi, but he didn't tell how or why. This computer generation is blowing my mind, but I got to keep up or get left behind. Oh, I like that. I like that one. <laughs> that was pretty smooth. Who was that by? The same guy? Lawrence Allen Brown. Brown. Lawrence Allen Brown. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now you see when you all had to throw us out here on Zoom, we had to really figure it out. Oh, that's a friend, okay. Right. Yeah. Lawrence Allen Brown, if words could fly. Okay. Yeah. He's so good. All right, anybody else have anything else to share? I hope you all uh, understand your lessons. Um, Miss Kim, you want us to time ourselves for this writing? Yeah, just about 10 minutes, but it's no pressure. You don't want to go like 30 minutes, but if you end up going 12, 15 minutes, that's fine. But 10 okay. minutes, around 10 minutes is good on both of, the, on both of the pieces. With the Spanish, you're supposed to write a story that involves a grocery store shopping, but you're supposed to write it with the definition that you thought that the Spanish word was. All right, can I just hear... Right quick before we leave, Miss, if you don't mind, so I can get a clear picture. Okay, Miss uh, Jean, what do you think your Spanish word means? Uh, I think it means free. Vallejo. Free. I think it means free. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, what about you, Miss Gloria? I think it means a seasoned female. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm writing these down so you all can be shocked at what it actually means. Miss uh, Vicky? Took a little Spanish, so I know what mine means. <laughs> what does it mean? Um, like a page in a book. Okay. Miss Betty? Verano. Being strong. Being strong. Miss mm -hmm. Sharon Hartnett, what does your word mean? Almentando. Shanet. Be still, just stop. It means stop or be still. Yes, no, it sounds like a big word. All right, Perfect. and my word is ayudar, ayudar, ayudar. I think that is a color. I, if I had to say, no, it's not, no, it's not no color. I'm just going to say it's yard. It means yard. <laughs> Give me All another right, word right. that I don't know, Kim. I don't want the one I know. I don't know okay. how many words I know, and but that's what it. I think it is, but I, I'll give you another one. Okay. 
Okay, because Spanish words look so much like American words sometimes. All right. What about Miss Vicky? I have the word grito, G R I T O. Do you know that okay. word? Um, no, I don't know. G R I T O. Okay, that's better. I don't know. All right, good job. So I'm I'm putting you back. I'm putting you down for that word. G R I T O. Okay. Yes. All right. And I think it means I think it means grits. <laughs> <laughs> It has the, that the that's, so, okay. that's so funny to me. <laughs> oh, because this does this have something to do with the grocery store since we have to talk about grocery store. All right. So remember, Miss Sharon Hartnett, you said that you thought your word means stop or be still. So you're supposed to write a story that involves the gross grocery shopping and something about stopping or being still. Oh, okay. That's what I got to do. Okay. All right. Yes, but I still want you to look that word up to see what it actually really means. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So is that it for everyone? Anybody else got something to add or say? All right, don't forget that if you want, oh, Miss Jean, don't forget to uh, send me that, yes, Pearl of Wisdom. Can I put it in chat now? Uh, if you have, well, can you email it to me? Because yes, well, you, can can. you can put it in the chat because it'll be saved in the chat. It's up to you. You can email okay, I'll put it, it in the chat. Okay. Can I, can I get your email address, Kimberly, to send you this piece so you can read it? Thank you so much. Uh, yes, so I'm going to put it in the chat. Okay. It's Kimberly, K I M B R L I E, dot right, W R I G H T, at Fulton County. GA.gov. Okay, thank you. All right. Don't forget that if you want to nominate somebody, uh, you can be famous somebody that is a local artist for our next uh, artist of the month, poet of the month, writer of the month, please feel free. You can write that in any chats. And this month we were celebrating and honoring our sister, uh, Phyllis Wheatley. Uh, I just wanna leave you with one of her quotes. In every human beast, God has implanted a principle, which we call love of freedom. It is impatient of oppression and pants for deliverance. Thank you so much. Let me see y'all pump y'all fists. This class is Word Up. The class is all about poetry, short stories, and spoken word. I have enjoyed you all immensely today. Thank you so much. I'm going to be writing uh, about my prompts in my Spanish word that I have for next week. Uh, I love you all. Keep writing and have a wonderful and blessed day. Thanks for joining me, Kimberly Wright, with Word Up. See you next time. Peace, everybody. Yeah, my title. Did, did you get it? Yes, ma'am. Good. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Time, is, time is fleeting. <laughs> Time is up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs>